The circulation and breathing network has a nice theme that runs through it. Each review group historically has done things differently and so we're trying to learn from each other to see what are the best practices in terms of editorial work, what are the best practices in priority setting and can we share some of those uh, among the different review groups so we can learn from each other. The main thing we have in our strategic plan is looking at some of the complex methods, complex reviews, so um, I'm happy to support a lot of the prognostic reviews and diagnostic reviews and a network support fellow is looking at network meta-analysis. There is um, push within Cochrane to utilise more complex methods, especially these network meta-analyses in which you can compare indirect and direct evidence um, with multiple um, comparison and treatment arms. Uh, so it's really effective if you have an intervention where there is more than just A and B. There's a lot of excitement um, to do network meta-analyses, but not many people have the actual skills and the statistical know-how to do so. Um, but it's great that we have the foundation because there's actually the drive for people to learn and now it's just helping putting the learning and the skills together with the enthusiasm. I really feel we are moving in the right direction and we're working quite hard on prioritisation and looking at how groups have different processes and how they could be potentially aligned. Circulation and breathing, when you think about the type of conditions, things like myocardial infarction, acute ischemic stroke, have a global burden of disease that's quite significant. The evidence, the research is constantly changing in some of these areas. There's so much being re research being produced that it's hard for the average clinician to keep up, let alone the patient population. Synthesizing all of these studies into a format that's understandable and digestible is, is really key.